A microaggression is a brief, often subtle, everyday exchange that either consciously or subconsciously cuts someone down based off of their identity or perceived group membership. You should really play up the race card when you apply to medical school considering your GPA. This is a microaggression. As a queer woman of color, I planned on becoming a doctor with my sole purpose of going back and serving my Mexicana community. During my sophomore year, I sought out guidance from the pre-med advising center on campus as no one in my family is a doctor. During the meeting, it was suggested to me by the advisor that because my grades were not competitive enough, I strongly emphasize that I was Mexicana on my application to have even the slightest chance of being accepted. I'm now graduating in the spring with a BS in biochemistry, and I have not applied to medical school. Instead, because of experiences like these, I plan on pursuing a PhD relating to studying and shifting STEM culture. For universities, to foster a more inclusive STEM environment, all those within it must first become aware of their words and their actions that are complicit in institutionally racist practices. These words and these actions are ultimately the reason why minority students leave STEM. In order to cultivate a more inclusive environment, we must change the system. How though? How do we fix a broken system? A common sentiment often shared by those within the university is that they want to change the system, but they don't know how. How can I do anything? How is anything I'm going to do make a difference? To change the system, we must first challenge the mindset of students, staff, and faculty. To deconstruct the racist practices that occur with universities, we have to shift the individual belief systems. By taking it upon ourselves to shift beliefs and learn about the inequities that occur within STEM, we can take the first steps towards creating a more inclusive learning environment. From 2011, a study by the Journal of Higher Education reported that discriminating practices and stigmatizing experiences are a common occurrence for many students of color on campuses, especially those at predominantly white colleges and universities. Three studies from 1998 to 2004 reported that underrepresented women were leaving STEM at a rate higher than any other group of individuals. And there's still a severe lack of research regarding discrimination queer students face in STEM because researchers have not deemed it important enough to study yet. To cultivate a more inclusive environment, we must change these things. Women of color specifically reported exclusionary practices at universities in the following ways. Women of color reported being avoided by white students in class, selecting where to sit, and selecting group partners, as well as lab partners. Women of color were not included in informal study groups. And women of color were not included in informal socializing and networking between students and faculty where useful information was shared regarding class and lab work as scholarship and research opportunities. These are just a few of the inequities that occur. To establish a more holistic community, we must change the system. To establish a more holistic community, universities must engage all students and employees in conversations regarding the importance of inclusion and equity in academia. By engaging in these types of conversations, we can remove stigma about race, gender, and sexuality, and shift individual belief systems to cultivate a more inclusive environment. In the classroom, 
non-marginalized majority individuals can take note of their presence. Ask yourself, do most folks in this class look like me? Ask yourself right now, do most folks in this audience look like me? By engaging in these types of questions, we can participate in metacognition, or thinking about our thinking, which works to bring some of our implicit biases to the forefront so that we can work to challenge and dismantle them, resulting in a more inclusive environment. But what else? There have to be more opportunities to learn, right? Yes, students, but particularly non-marginalized majority students, can attend workshops regarding diversity and inclusion. At Western, the Society of Advancement of Chicanos and Native Americans in Science, or SACNIS, offers a microaggression workshop. At this workshop, students can learn how to recognize what a microaggression is, as well as how to respond if they see one occur or if one happens to them. By participating in these workshops, students can not only improve equity and inclusion in STEM, but throughout the entire university. But students aren't the only responsible entity in shifting STEM culture. Faculty must also choose to engage in conversations regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion. Studies have found that faculty that engage in active learning styles, such as group work, group work, problem sets, and opportunities for formative feedback, cultivate a more inclusive learning environment, and better support the learning styles of underrepresented students. But not all faculty adopt these learning styles, or they implement them minimally. To effectively learn to teach to all students, professional development workshops have been established, where the educator can become the student and participate in a diverse array of sessions, such as teaching through problem-based learning to increase learning, as well as working to assist students with career and advising and exploration, and techniques to cultivate a more inclusive learning environment and welcoming classroom. But if we really want to improve STEM, we can't just do this. And not all universities can afford to send instructors to these kinds of workshops, which is understandable. But it shouldn't prevent them from implementing easy steps into the classroom to make it more welcoming. There are elementary steps that every professor can take towards improving the equity and inclusion in class. These steps include updating the syllabi to include an expectation of respect, where the location is of the closest gender neutral bathroom, and campus resources available to students. Professors can also take time at the beginning of the term to set norms. Norm setting provides an easy opportunity for professors to say what is to be expected during the course and what will be considered inappropriate. It also gives an easy chance to discuss pronouns as well as microaggressions. Professors should also conduct midterm evaluations where they can gauge in the middle of the quarter how students are responding to lecture <coughs> material as well as the classroom climate. Lastly, professors should continually reiterate to students in class that the classroom is meant to be equitable and inclusive to all students and that they are willing to take steps to improving it if this is not the case. But working outside, working in the classroom is not good enough. Faculty and staff must take it outside the classroom and engage with these kinds of topics in broader ways. One way faculty and staff can continue their education is through university-sponsored diversity and inclusion workshops. The majority of universities offer these optional workshops where faculty and staff can learn more techniques towards cultivating an inclusive environment. 
However, the most important thing to note here is that these workshops are optional. Attendance is not mandatory. And it's often those that are complicit in racist actions that don't feel compelled to go. So if we really want to improve STEM, it's imperative that all those employed by the university attend these workshops. At Western, the College of Science and Engineering offers a diversity and inclusion workshop once a quarter. As a result of an increasingly uncomfortable climate and several catalyst events, there's been a student effort to have the college report a minimum goal of 75% faculty and staff attendance <coughs> to these workshops. Through continued conversations as through between the college and the students, for the first time ever, the diversity and inclusion workshops sold out. Mm -hmm. And there was a wait list that had to be started. Mm -hmm. Meaningful change is tangible but slow. And continued education regarding these issues is imperative. For meaningful change to happen, administrators must be willing to listen to how the current system is flawed. And more importantly, administrators must be willing to work with those disadvantaged by the current system in order to create a more beneficial new one. One way administrators can improve the inclusivity in all majors is by reassessing the effectiveness of end of term evaluations. The majority of evaluations, the majority of colleges across the nation utilize these evaluations as a way to gauge course material as well as instructor style. But the majority of these evaluations don't address course climate or inclusivity. Western's evaluations don't address course climate or inclusivity. If we truly want to improve the inclusivity and equity at universities, administrators must review evaluations to include a section on climate. The University of Wisconsin-Madison incorporates a climate question into their evaluations. The question simply reads, the course environment was a safe space where I was encouraged to express myself and ask students to select from a range of responses. This is just one example of an extensive range of questions evaluations could ask regarding course climate. Evaluations could provide invaluable feedback regarding the climate of classrooms. Just to survive STEM, underrepresented students almost always have to seek out side sources and support in order to earn a degree and graduate college. This, this is how we survive. This is our persistence. While at college, I've had to seek out numerous resources just to find a sense of belonging. Sackness, out in science, as well as my job. All three of these groups focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. All three of these groups were started by people with marginalized identities. This is where the minority became the majority. So instead of continuing to put the labor on marginalized folks, why not shift the culture to make it more inclusive and welcoming? The next steps towards making STEM more inclusive and welcoming don't all have to be big, scary administrative action items. We can start small, and from there, we can build up. There are easy things everybody can do to improve the climate. Everyone, from student to administrator, can start incorporating pronouns into their introductions. Mi amo Lia Sabina Maria Martinez Cook. Y mi pronombre es ella. All individuals, but particularly non-marginalized majority individuals, can attend diversity and inclusion workshops, such as the one put on by the college or the student-run microaggression one. All non-marginalized majority individuals can take note of their presence in the spaces that they occupy. And all non-marginalized majority individuals 
can further deconstruct and recognize the amount and ability they're able to speak in classrooms and the spaces that they are in. Science is no longer white men in white lab coats, and everyone deserves to feel included. Thank you.